Let me explain to you why we're here. Uh, first of all, no one else would talk to us, so thank you. <laughs> so we spoke with a lot of heads of news divisions, and uh, they are reluctant to speak on the record. Do you have an idea of why they might be so reluctant to speak publicly? Well, I think that um, news organizations, there's a sense that they are um, being scrutinized and being criticized in a way that they've never experienced before. And I think there's a bit of a bunker mentality that has set in. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's very, very hard when you're constantly, constantly being criticized by... Who would criticize the news? Who would do such a, such a thing? About, that's terrible. <laughs> All right. It's my fault. But you know what's interesting? The people that we talked to would all say, well, you know, you got you to gotta deliver the ratings. They call them the minute to minutes, right? How much of it is the ratings pressure and how much of it is a self-consciousness over accusations of liberal bias or accusations of a political agenda? What concerns would they express to you in that situation? ABC News reported to me in one form or another for mm -hmm. probably 35 years, 30 right. some odd years. And my advice to them was to not hear the noise as much, to continue doing the job that, uh, that we've entrusted them to do. Right. Which is to tell the truth, to state the facts, uh, to present the news in an accurate and a fair and in a timely basis. But we never sought to drive ratings or even bottom line success at the sacrifice of what we consider to be quality. It just it wasn't part of our discussion. What they will tell you, and maybe they didn't say it, you know, in, in those meetings, is the producer of the piece will be cognizant of the minute-to-minute -minute ratings. The executive producer of the show will be cognizant of those. And the decisions that they make were almost entirely built on what they thought might have rated. I mean, it, if you're, it's asking, been a little if you're asking whether there have been incidents when news organizations fail to carry things because they don't think they'll be of interest to their audience, I'm sure that's the I'm case. No, I'm not saying instances. But yours, but then, I'm saying that's been You think shaping. it's a regular thing? And not told Should in the know right about way. Not be, see, that's... that's yes. I, I would argue that there are stories that are not told because there's a belief that people aren't interested in them. Mm -hmm. I don't think there are stories that are told that are told inaccurately just to make them more interesting to people. It's not uh, inaccurate. I'm defending an organization as opposed to news in general. Right. I just don't have enough... But trust in news during the Cronkite era was... It was one of the most valued institutions. Today, it's somewhere between... Congress and herpes, you know, <laughs> in terms of its Q rating. What happened? It starts with technology enabling an explosion of programming, of, which includes news and information. And uh, with that, I believe, has come a dilution in quality. The more volume, typically, when, mm -hmm. as, it, as it grows and grows and grows and explodes, results in, in my opinion, a loss of quality. And then you look at what is presented as news on social media, and you can immediately conclude that a lot of what is presented that people think is news mm -hmm. is not news as certainly we knew it when we were growing up and what we were taught news should be. Um, right. So, so I think what people believe is news is really opinion, and opinion is very different than that. Opinion is a, is a bias. But you're in a business where the first word you say, the first thing you say at the top of every broadcast is, our top story tonight. That's opinion. It's subjective. There's this strange disconnect between the high-mindedness of what they say they do, democracy dies in darkness, mm -hmm. versus the reality of how they produce it. Breaking news, tonight, everyone will die. Watch us because their business model is based on engagement. It is an editorial decision to decide what, to, what story to tell first, but you're suggesting that that in itself is a, an example of a lessening of quality or a bias? It's, it's, it's bias. If you don't admit, I'll, I'll give you an example. 
If you lead every night with the Mueller report, Mueller, the Mueller investigation, they created a television show. They created the OJ trial out of the Mueller report. That business model, it feels like, overwhelms whatever journalistic credibility exists. And, and isn't that what needs to be fixed? I do believe that uh, many news organizations feeling embattled by the Trump and the Trump uh, era mm -hmm. um, reacted to it um, perhaps by um, building up his potential demise. In other, in other words, I think, I think there was a, almost a glee uh, felt. If, if that now, were a singular example, right, when we withdrew forces from Afghanistan, there was, appropriately enough, a pretty big focus on it. Big story. Very big Should story. Should have been a lot of focus on it. I, I think you're absolutely right. But the focus on it was one of high dudgeon over how could this happen and why did it happen and what's going on. But we'd been there since 2000 and... 20 some odd, 20, right. one year, 20 year war, right? Isn't some of the context of what happened based on no one covering it in a significant way over the past 10 years? Well, you're but suggesting it had been covered on a regular basis, then we wouldn't have been surprised by the speed at which the Taliban took over the country as we drew down our forces? So I'm saying if it had been covered more, right. maybe we wouldn't even have been there that long. What I'm saying is that we are not well informed that the news media goes all or nothing on everything, that they're like eight-year-olds playing soccer. And if you've ever seen them... Everybody photograph, everybody run to the everybody ball? Everybody run to the ball. And, yeah. and that there's no perspective because... So I could argue there are some stories that have not been covered enough. Um, maybe because there's a belief that the audience isn't interested in them. Maybe because even news organizations get tired of presenting them on a regular basis. Well, I don't know. I don't know incidents of that. You don't think that the, the outrage nature of the coverage was a bit... I mean, the only that. thing I could argue is maybe if it had been covered more, mm -hmm. America would have been more outraged earlier about the fact that we were there. That's my point. That maybe the pullout would have happened earlier. I don't know. I, or more I lived through the Vietnam era. Let's just say, I, yes. we, we'll, we'll conclude war is hell, right? Therefore, yes. if news organizations cover the hell, maybe we won't have wars. When news narrows their focus of coverage, people get a skewed picture of what a reality is. I For think, you're, yeah. be, I think you're, you're being a little too critical, in my opinion, of right. news overall. That's not to say that news organizations don't hype big stories, because many of them do, and sometimes overhype, sometimes to a fault. Um, but When do they not? I, I'd be more curious as to when you thought they didn't. I, we'd have to go back to the biggest story of our time. I, COVID, COVID, was that overhyped? 900,000 people in the that, United States have died from it. Doesn't feel overhyped to me. No. I'll give you an example with COVID that I think is, is apropos. Mask wearing. The political conflict over whether or not to wear masks. And the overwhelming majority of conversation is speculation about what that means to freedom and this person's anger about it. And so little of it is, what does it do? Why did surgeons wear them? Well, but I think that part of the story was of told. The sto part of the story that was told already is that people should wear masks because there's, for, from a scientific perspective, there's a real reason to do so. Right. And, and, and I don't know, does the audience need to be reminded again and again and again of that? Why are they reminded again and again that it's causing a fight? By hyping conflict, aren't they also escalating that conflict? Well, they hyping and conflict and they covering it? conflict. I think... You're covering it too much as hyping it? I think their coverage of conflict hypes it. And I actually think they drive a lot of it. So I guess if there's more and more incidents mm -hmm. of people going crazy about mask wearing, I guess I could argue it should be covered. Now, if you're asking me whether I think there's probably been too much made of that, probably. I would probably... Don't more. you think coverage can influence behavior? Can news influence behavior? Sure, it can, absolutely.
which is why I think it's so important for news to act in responsibly. Um, look, oh. it has just as much a power, just as it has a power to do good, it has a power to, to do bad. What can be done to manage it more responsibly? It's managed responsibly by some organizations and by others, it's not. Look, people are not as hel held accountable for inaccuracies. So there's that issue. And then there's the whole issue of profiting from, I'll call it inaccuracy. In other words, right. from opinion and from, well, presenting things in an inaccurate fashion. I think if you're looking at overall the pot of that isn't considered news today, it's, we're in a, it's a, it's a problem. So to, to, to answer your question, I don't know what the answer is in terms of fixing it. Let's use Fox News as an example, because I think it's a good example. Roger Ailes had an idea. I don't know if you knew Roger at all. Roger came to me uh, and right. wanted to run ABC News at one point, before, believe it or not, in the early 90s. Boy, that would have been, I that would have been a Trojan horse. Yeah, we weren't looking for someone at that point. Right. <laughs> so I wasn't in need, but I met with him. It's really clear that he is advocating, or was advocating, a political position and used his storytelling ability and his narrative ability to create this powerhouse that is really the media arm of a political movement. Look, if, Ro if Roger Ailes had concluded, well, which he did, that, there, that news had a bias, that the then existing news organizations, particularly cable news, had a bias and was ignoring the, the, the right, and that he was going to go out and create an organization that was not going to be biased. But that's that would have been, but he didn't do he that. He was cynical. But I don't did, think but, he was but doing But he didn't that. do that. He, he thought there was a business in being biased. Correct. But then what we've also seen is that other news organizations then pivoted in another direction as a countermeasure to what he was doing. So Correct. That, to me, was a huge mistake, because I think that was at the expense of credibility at the expense of being accurate at this I would argue even at the expense of being responsible can you do a profitable news organization that also is has the strength to cut through the noise in this media environment it's almost impossible really today i don't know how you would do it you'd have to i don't think you can create a subscription news service uh, that would generate the kind of revenue you'd need to cover news right. Mm -hmm. and, and advertising is typically reliant on consumption, so you, you'd have to really be betting that you could drive huge amounts of consumption. What would you do? How would you fix it? Or what? I've thought about if, it a lot. If you were going to create it, how would you do it? You'd have to start completely from scratch, S but n not because you're trying to erase mistakes of the past, but you're trying to erase perceptions that have been created over time, and you'd have to populate it, people with incredible credibility and responsibility and accountability. It sounds very idealistic, doesn't it? It sounds incredibly idealistic. But, but what, maybe we need it, I don't know. I still think of that idea of a news organization that is more cognizant of what that business model is, and that maybe there's money to be made that's not as relentlessly uh, hyperbolic. Um, but I don't know, I just don't know how practical that is. In terms of, you don't know that that's a winner as far as like, that, that it could be financially viable. Well, financially viable is, well, even, yes, but I'm much more interested in whether it would truly make a difference in the world. I feel like it, it has to, because I've seen the impact that one news organization has had on the deterioration of it. Somebody's got to generate fodder that's better quality. And it, it feels like, so I guess what I'm asking you is, will you run that? <laughs> You're not the first person who's asked me to consider Well, here we are then. So, so <laughs> no, that's what you, you seem to have an idea for it. You, you have an affinity for it. You've run these large people organizations have, People before. have presented me with that concept. Uh, yeah, they have. And? Well, I, I, haven't, I haven't said yes to it because I'm not sure how practical it is or right. how effective it would be. I don't know. Thank you very much for sitting down with us. My pleasure. Much.